Hello and welcome back to Downtime Activities. Today we're going to be starting a new single player Star Wars RPG campaign. We'll see how long it goes. There may be other interweaving plots and things. As per usual, we have big dreams of what we want to do and we'll see what comes of it. Um, the player in this campaign will be Will. And this will be a kind of classic Edge of the Empire story of a scumbag. Up and coming scumbag at the moment. But we'll, we'll see uh, what comes of him. I get to... Uh... I get to play this time and not, and not run it. Run it. Mm -hmm. So it'll be a good change of pace for you. Maybe we'll find some way to tie in all these stories eventually, and you'll get to get punched in the face by Haas Radborn. Who knows? Or <laughs> I'll go after collecting that rather large <laughs> bounty on Haas Radborn's on head. Yeah, that, that could be fun. I'd, I'd have fun uh, running it where you're chasing down Slur's character. Anyway, this story takes place in a different, similar part of the galaxy to the previous story we've run on the channel, but is a, a different story with a different person in a slightly different part of the Outer Rim. For those of you who are familiar with Star Wars lore, maybe you've heard of Coruscant, the shining metropolis. Maybe you've heard of it. Metropolis, that is, an entire planet covered in sprawling urban city. And, uh, urban is, decay. Uh, urban decay, more or less. And it is... Uh, a shining bastion of democracy at some points and tyranny at others, but is this huge feat. We're not going to be there. We're going to be in Little Coruscant, also known as the Smuggler's Moon, Narshada. Narshada is a moon that circles around Nalhutta, which is kind of the seat of power of the Hut Empire, the Hut Cartel, and is inside of Hut controlled space. Technically, this is Imperial run, but the Huts and the Imperials have. A good enough thing going that the Huts more or less police their own affairs. They just keep the taxes pumping over to the Empire, and the Empire is happy. It's worth it to say that this is during the Imperial reign. Uh, Empire is at large and in control. The Rebellion is very grassroots and just starting at this time in history, and has little to no pr known presence anywhere in the galaxy. Our story takes place, uh, at the start at the very least, in the Lesser Shipyard District of Narshada. Uh, this, that would imply that there's a greater shipyard district? There is a greater. This is So this particular district is lots of smaller shipyards. This isn't like large hut controlled, like big freighters coming in and out. This is smaller kind of locally owned pockets that are shipyards, place for ships to land, get repair and leave. Because of its nature, it's more of the... Nar Shaddaa is all crime, right? <laughs> like all crime all the time. That's the, that's the slogan of Nar Shaddaa. But... This particular place is like the even seedier shipyard because the big name distributors of illegal goods are just going to land in the bigger port. This is smaller, small time crime and also just locals kind of coming and are going. There, and yeah, stuff are, there, well. but are, are there any just normal people? If, if you lived on a planet that was like, it's just all crime all the time, <laughs> would you just... Wouldn't you try and move? <laughs> you probably would if you could afford to, but Fair. it's not always easy to afford to. Good point. In this part of town, crime is ever-present, as it is everywhere in Nar Shaddaa, but it's, it's smaller gangs uh, that have kind of loose ties or affiliations with larger gangs and syndicates elsewhere on the moon. In particular, you are in a uh, small shipyard run by a basilisk named Garo Doss. Um, Garo Doss, for those who don't know, Besilisk is those like big forearmed guys. You might recognize it from episode mm. two, the how big your pocket book is. That guy. It's one of those. <laughs> okay. He is a fairly old Besilisk and a well known person around these parts, at least for being a really good mechanic and owning a shipyard. Ships come and go. I spoke about crime. Gangs are ever present in all parts of the moon, but here in particular, the kind of known. This is their territory kind of gang is known as the Viridian Comets Swoop Gang. They're a swoop bike gang. The, the Comets kind of run the streets around here. You know that they gun run. They sell spice. Uh, they have connections to a larger syndicate elsewhere on the moon that's kind of their supplier and their distributors, more or less. Um, they personally have direct connection with Garo Das because they made a deal many, many years ago when he opened his shipyard. Basically, they always come to him for repairs on any of their bikes or speeders, and he does them for free. In return, he doesn't have to pay protection money to them in order for them to kind of police the area around, make sure no one robs him or anything like that. Um, 
he has a good working relationship with them. You wouldn't say that he likes them, but he tolerates them because that's just the, the nature of the world here. That's how business is run. Um, in response with this, like kind of a, a sign of this is posted out front or more or less graffitied out front of his business is their kind of signet, which is a green orb with like a swirling trail coming off of it. That's been spray painted on there, meaning this right. establishment is under the protection of the comets. You are a friend and roommate, more or less, of Garo Das. Uh, he kind of, you guys encountered each other a couple years back, and he somewhat took pity on you, but also saw a good opportunity in you as someone who could help him around his shop and around his shipyard. You have operated as kind of his assistant mechanic, helping him with repairs. You, as a Shistavanin, are a fairly intimidating person and carry a blaster, so it's when the comets are when the comets aren't around, it's someone else to kind of keep the riffraff from stirring up trouble. In response to this, he has given you a place to lay your head that's more or less safe in these hard streets. Would you like to describe your character? Introduce yourself. Uh, my character in this campaign, the only character in this campaign, not the only character, the only player character. Yeah, it'd be really so boring if I was the only character. <laughs> Garandas doesn't exist. Yeah, <laughs> just you, just me. Uh, uh, I am playing a Shistavanin, which are kind of like wolfmen, um, kind of werewolfy, but without the transformation. Um, <laughs> just always transformed. Werewolves. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, named Raiden. Uh, my career is bounty hunter, and my specialization is gadgeteer. Um, but being a starting level character and more of my XP went to characteristics than did towards uh, skills or um, uh, talents. So I don't have a ton. Um, dark brown fur, gold eyes, a um, little over by, by Star Wars measurements, two meters tall. Um, uh, about the size of a womp rat, I guess, now that I think about it. <laughs> They're not much bigger than two meters. They're not much bigger than two meters, and you're not much bigger than two meters. So, Shistavon in the size of a womp rat. That's it's perfect. Um, perfect description. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I don't. I own very little. Uh, but I'm definitely not. I'm definitely not a bounty hunter in in the sense of like heavy armor and. Uh, um, you know, a heavy blaster rifle and stuff like that, at least yet. I've got... You're not a Boba Fett yet. No. Um, That's the dream. Just a, a, just a guy with a blaster pistol <laughs> and a dream. And you kind of see yourself as a bounty hunter, mm -hmm. right? Like you've, you've done some small-time stuff here or there for, like, local... And, and it's locals. probably more bounty hunting in the sense of, like... Of, like, those gangs or syndicates being, like... This guy owes his money. Track him down and either bring him or the money back. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, it's probably not, it at least probably hasn't been anything like Imperial sanctioned or, mm -hmm. um, stuff like that. Small time. Mm -hmm. You're more or less, your bounty hunting has been bounty hunting for small gangs and syndicates. And the bounty hunting has been more or less doing crime for them, <laughs> helping them in their more or less legal crime because all crime all the time. Welcome to the moon. Um, at this particular day, you were out and about away from the shipyard and are on your way back, uh, moving through the cramped and smoggy streets of Nar Shaddaa. Usually, I mean, everywhere in the moon is cramped and uncomfortable besides some of the larger, more luxurious casino interiors. Uh, but in, on the streets, especially in this shipyard district, the only open areas are the places that the ships land. So you're kind of navigating through these different alleyways and street walkways, avoiding speeders, not following any sort of laws and how they're how fast they're moving and how quick they're taking turns, and uh, making your way back to the shipyard. Moving along, you see the usual sort of things. Businesses around, almost all of which are either um, spray-painted with that sign of the comets or spray-painted with a... Different signia, kind of two overlapping spirals, one blue and one red, which you know is signs of the Nebula Syndicate. And the Nebula Syndicate, a large organization that operates broader on the moon and is kind of the parent organization of the comets. Mm. Some of the businesses here are not under their protection. They're literally owned by the syndicate. So it's not um, 
it's not two different gangs no. laying claim to this. It's not like a rival gang sort of situation. It's like okay. parent company and affiliate distributor uh, in <laughs> okay. a very criminal sense. Um, the <laughs> most well-known of which in this area that you've probably been to once or twice is called A's, but it's Aldell's Arms and Armor. Mm. And it's kind of the local gun shop, blaster and armor shop. And it's all, again, criminally run, but like this syndicate primarily deals in weapons and spice and the weapons it sells in this area through that business and the spice it sells through the comets you move past that store a couple others you see the usual kind of characters I'd, I'd hanging. stop if i had the money <laughs> hopefully soon um and arriving back at the shipyard you see a familiar although not always welcome sight a number of swoop bikes parked in front of the kind of main entrance to the shop where you know that garo usually operates out of um, and you can tell that there's conversation going on inside. One of the bikes you recognize as uh, the kind of bike of one of the local leaders slash really heavies for the Comets, and his name is Khan Harin, and he's a Nikto. Nikto are kind of hard to describe. You know, I think you know, <laughs> I, I know, you know yes, what they look yeah. like. Google Nikto if you want to know what a Nikto <laughs> looks like. Um, <laughs> and I was... I assume it's going to oh, just head in. Mm -hmm. Walking in, you can see... I don't, necessarily, I don't really have any beef with these guys at the moment, so <laughs> I don't need to sneak around back or anything. You can see that Conharin is there with a number of other Comets. They have their... It's very much a biker gang. Like They have mm -hmm. more or less leather jackets with their insignia on the back. Much more like artistically drawn than just like the circle swirl. They didn't spray paint, paint the back of their jacket. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's painted or like kind of em embroidered or something... Space embroidered onto the back. <laughs> Space patches. <laughs> and is a more stylized green swirling comet. Um, he seems to be having a conversation with Garo. And you can see uh, in kind of the little garage off to the side that a, that like a window peeks into. Uh, there's one of the bikes that seems to have some damage to it. They seem to just be talking to him about what's wrong with them, what they need fixed. You walk in and... Um, Garo kind of acknowledges you as you walk in through mm -hmm. the door. The bikers seem to kind of just keep their back turned to you at first, but then Khan turns and gives you a nod as you walk in. I mean, I... I go take a look at the bike, I guess. Okay. You kind of... I don't really have much else to do at the moment. You kind of turn, walk through, and go over to the bike. You can tell that it looks like uh, it's been hit by blaster fire kind of up underneath one of the panels and has kind of um, jacked up something of the uh, engine block of this, basically. Some that more uh, is probably going to need a replacement part and some work to install it. Go ahead and give me a moderate um, or average mechanics check. Uh. I can do that. One success, two threats. One success, two threats. Um, you can, uh, looking over it, you're, you know that this part is like a very common one that like Garo keeps these kind of parts around because right. he repairs these bikes so often. You know exactly where to go grab it from a shelf and you feel like you could probably put this in and repair it in like a couple hours. Like it wouldn't be a big job. Um, however, like as you're kind of looking it over, the door opens behind you and you can see a kind of just like old scarred up looking human with one of these jackets on kind of poking in and says, what are you looking at my bike for dog? Hmm. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I, I don't, I, I, I'm not, I'm, I'm sort of choosing not to be insulted by being called dog because mm -hmm. I imagine it happens all the time. I'm just trying like trying to think of how to actually uh, just how to actually reply um. <laughs> my reply will probably my reply will probably be something along the line of do you talk to all your mechanics this way <laughs> <laughs> he kind of kind of continues like a tough guy persona look mm -hmm. kind of glaring at you and then walking in from behind him con her in kind of comes up and at this point i mean you already know this but kind of as he steps he always steps with this like loud thump because he's got a cybernetic left mm. leg you know that more or less, there, there was another biker gang in the past and there was a collision and a leg was lost. Mm. Because, if you know anything about the Star Wars universe, you know that the entire story is just about people losing limbs. <laughs> Start to finish, that is the Star Wars story. And, Nick, and this Nick Do Conheran is no hands, exception to the rules. Legs, hands, sometimes and bottom legs, halves. Bottom halves. 
uh, this is a Star Wars story, so what would it be if there wasn't some? How many people missing? have ended up as robot spiders? At least one. At least one. At least one. Um, and he kind of stomps in there, and uh, he says... And he kind of, like, puts a hand on the mm-hmm. shoulder of his compatriot, and he kind of, like, gives you the look of, like, easy. And, like, looks at the guy, and he says, new with the, he's new with the comets. This is the assistant mechanic here. We don't need to give him any trouble. He kind of looks over at him, rolls his eyes, and goes back into the shop. And Khan kind of turns to follow him, but then, like, pauses a second and turns back to you, and he says, uh, Raiden, you kind of fancy yourself a bounty hunter, right? <laughs> I I uh, I prefer to not use the word fancy, but I uh, get your point. <laughs> he says, uh, "You remember Ras Tarek, the corn uh, rid with rid, ridden with me for a while, technically guy." Yeah, I probably saw him a time or two. Well, uh, there's a price out on his head right now. If you're in the market for some work, Miria's looking for him. He. Uh, Decided that distribution's all good and well, but maybe he wanted to take a little bit with him and jump world. Don't think he's gotten out yet. We have eyes on most of the spaceports around here, but if you could bring him back and bring back what he took from her, uh, I believe there's a 500 credits in it for you. I uh, assume he's wanted alive? Alive, ideally. You'll still get full payment if he's... if. Uh, you can prove that he's dealt with and the shipment that he took comes back with him. Uh, that's what's most important. Ideally back alive, though. You know how Maria likes to make examples of people. That's kind of what I figured. Any idea where he might be hiding? You know, we've uh, checked up and down this district. Wouldn't be surprised if he's hightailed it elsewhere. Uh, we don't know if he's got any family or anything in the area. None that we knew of. If he's trying to jump world, I wouldn't be surprised if he's either in this or the, the greater district. I'll look around for him. Bring him back. Like I said, 500 credits in it for you. If you bring him back alive and with the shipment, and he kind of like shrugs and nods. Like, like He's someone who's usually kind of... He's part of a crime send, or crime gang, so he like, you know, has like an air of like, this mm-hmm. is hush hush. But like, he's like a shitload of spice. Uh, then... Uh, it was, there might be a it little, was either that or a shitload of guns. I mean. <laughs> a bit of a bonus in it for you. Careful, though. He's he's not right shot, and he's a shoot first, ask questions later kind of guy, especially when he's well, jumping. that makes two of us. Right now, he's going to be jumpy. Uh, you don't say. <laughs> All right. And he's going to go back into the shop and uh, share some, like, door closes. He sh- you can see he shares a couple final words with Garo and then him and his boys walk out, hop on their bikes. The one human, ugly-looking dude who kind of <laughs> s- smack-talked you for a second hops on the back of yep. one of the other guy's bikes. Yep. And they all I, w- I want to make sure he knows I saw it, too. <laughs> and he kind of, he like, kind of like, you can. he looks kind of dejected mm-hmm. as he crawls on and rides on the back of this guy's bike, and he kind of looks over his shoulder to see you, kind of like giving him mm-hmm. the glance over the thing. And he kind of like looks forward like he didn't notice, and they all, they all ride off. I'll at least get the part out. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. And then I guess let him know that uh, Khan's got me on a on a bounty. So okay, he'll say, "Well, best of luck to you. This should be an easy enough fix." I'm guessing. Yeah, a couple hours. He like looks at the part and oh yeah, typical. Fair enough. Thank you. No, he seems to aim there on the speeder bikes. Makes a speeder bike stop. They're smart. They aim there. Um, I kind of want to start with any, um, any of the spaceports, like an or any of any of the um, shipyards and docks and stuff in this lesser area that aren't affiliated with the comets. Or there's probably a lot of them, but like with the comets or um, um, like the syndicate. That sponsors them because mm-hmm. I don't think this guy would be that dumb. <laughs> You'd hope not, right? Um, in this district, I mean, there's in the the greater lesser mm-hmm. shipyard district. There's there's definitely multiple in the lesser <laughs> shipyard district as a whole. You would know they're like the most nearby one mm-hmm. um, that would be run. Like there's there's one that probably has like kind of more of its own small security force that's enough of a deterrent that the comments don't bother them, and you could definitely go there. 
Uh, yeah, I'll I'll start. Um, I'll start there. What was the name of the guy I'm after? The guy you're after is named. It's a it's a it's a Corin. Yeah. yeah. Kind of squid face dudes. Yeah. Uh, his name well, is Rast. They have a whole squid for a head. For a head, yeah. <laughs> squid headed dudes. Uh, Rast, R I S T, Tarek, T E R R I K. Rast Tarek. I'm sure I spelled the last name wrong, but it doesn't matter. As long as you know what to ask. Yes. For, that's what matters. It's a phonetics book. Um, okay, going there. Uh, the shipyard, it's, it's a little larger than the shipyard of Garo, but uh, isn't like a mechanic shop. It's just a coming and going port, more or less. And uh, the guy who runs it is a Rodian named Omic. You've a talked with him before. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll approach him if he's available. Mm -hmm. He's kind of... Again, there's not like a shop here so much as like he's kind of got a um, open shipyard area and there's kind of like a desk that he sits at that kind of overlooks the big open area that people come to to pay like fees and stuff mm -hmm. to come and go. And you can walk into the shipyard and there's a bunch of, you can see there's like four or five kind of generic heavies. Like they're, they're just kind of thugs with a blaster pistol on their hip or like a, a vibro axe or knife um, that just kind of are wandering around and there's a ton of those little like pit droids running all over. Those things are so cool. I like those. <laughs> Seems like this guy's got like quite the team of those that probably does any of the minor repairs or upkeep stuff that he, he offers to the, the ships that land here. And walking up, he kind of looks up at you and he, he gives you a look of like, oh, I don't remember your name, but I recognize yeah. you. And he's like, eh, how can I help you? I'm uh, actually just looking for information, if you have any. Looking for a Corin who's trying to jump ship from the Comets. Normally I wouldn't bother with something like that, but uh, he's pissed some people off in particular and they'd like him back. Go ahead and give me a easy persuasion. Good, because I don't have any levels of uh, um, negotiation or... Not persuasion. Uh, negotiation, yeah. For those who don't know the or, Star Wars RPG or, system, it's a or, dice pool system between the two things. <laughs> Uh, you could use either. It's probably the same. <laughs> it's the probably it's exactly it's exactly the same. I'll There's, just go with the. They kind of have their own specific dice though, and like the difficulty is how many dice you're rolling against. You roll it all in one big pile, and then there's like successes, failures, and then threats. A and flat nothing. A flat nothing. Straight nothing. Um, so a whole lot of nothing. This guy kind of looks at you, and he says. Well, you know, I don't have any love for the comets. Uh, the guy maybe tried to hop onto a ship or two that was coming and going from here, but I know well enough then to uh, piss in anyone's blue milk that's uh, <laughs> big around my neighborhood, so I told him to beat it. Well, as long as you told him to move on, that's all I need to know. He's not here. Um, I guess for you... I, can tell, I couldn't tell you. He might have tried other places. Anyone around here that's not stupid, though, would probably not try to piss off the comments. Unfortunately, there are people around here who are stupid. <laughs> you know, <laughs> more than uh, than you'd hope around these parts, that's for sure. More than you'd expect. Um, well, I guess I'll... I guess I'll try another one. Sort of, like, to some degree, the next one further on. Mm -hmm. um, expecting that he's just going down the line, but if he... Um, but, I mean, there's just going to be too many small spaceports for me to hit. To hit all of them? To hit all of them, so... I'm probably going to have to change tactics. As soon as I come up with what my other tactic is. Um, moving on to the next one. It's similarly, like, a, a, it's probably about the same size as Garo's. A little landing area. It's got enough space for a couple ships to land. Um, and it is one that is also, like, mechanic shop, shipyard... Um, and is run by a human named Guido. Guido? Mm -hmm. And this one, there's like a shop to kind of go into, and uh, Guido's behind the desk. He seems to be just finishing up kind of talking with a guy who seems a little frustrated, talking about how, like, 
you said these repairs were going to be done today. I need to get off world. <laughs> He's not a squid faced person. Um, and him shrugging and saying like, there was more wrong with your junker than you thought. It'll be done tomorrow. You got a problem with that. You can get someone to hook up and tow it out of my shop. And the guy just like shakes his head, gruffs, and then like stomps out of the store. And he like, looks up to you. He doesn't seem to recognize you. And like, how can I help you? Just run an errand for somebody looking for a Corin named Ras Tarek. Trying to get off world, but he's uh, made some enemies with uh, um, a few substantial people. Not his head for a second, you like. Ugly fella, squid head. Mm-hmm. I've seen him. Go ahead and roll me a charm. <laughs> <laughs> He says, and I'm like, what, the, what does that mean? What does that mean? <laughs> this uh, one will be a moderate one. So it'll be two that you're up against. It's a, it's a, a flat roll, as mm-hmm. it were. Uh, one failure, one threat. One failure, one threat. He's going to uh, I look you up and down and be like, I've seen him, I told him to beat it, and I'm going to tell you to do the same thing. Hmm. I'm kind of trying again for coercion here. Okay. Um, of like, I don't exactly think you understand. It's in your best interest and the best interest of your facility and your continued business to uh, help me track this man down. Go ahead and roll me a coercion. This one will still be a moderate coercion. Well, I'm going to spend a strain to decrease the difficulty of it. Okay. Using intimidating. Because I can do that. Yeah. Which is why Sklur did it all the time in my campaign. I see now why. Where it's just like, you know what? I'm just going to do this. Why not? Um, Strain's easier to recover than wounds are. It's cheaper. (laughs) It's, It's cheaper. That's fair. That's just one threat. Just one Sheesh. threat. That's My, the problem with running a single player campaign for you is, uh, is I can't you roll. can't roll for a damn. Um, Even when I'm relying on a on digital uh, to roll for me, I just can't. I can't do it. I can't roll. He's gonna kind of like he doesn't like puff his chest up like mm-hmm. he's. It's not like a he's like angry back at you it just seems like he doesn't really take it as a threat he seems to take it as more of like you trying to kind of continue to pester him um and he is kind of like eyes up and down for a second and he's like i told him to beat it now get out of my shop or we're gonna have a problem yeah damn right we're about to have a problem (laughs) and uh, like i'll just i'm just gonna i'm gonna just pull the blaster and lean on the counter Okay. And like, and e- even though I, I'm not necessarily expecting another coercion check here, I'm mm-hmm. telling him like, I'm not here to pester you. I'm here to track down a man who owes a significant debt to some very powerful and very dangerous people, and I don't think you want to be caught up in that. <laughs> He's gonna kind of like look down at the blaster, and there's like kind of a bit of a gulp for a second, um, and he'll be like. Look, I don't want any trouble with anybody. Let me just... I told him that I I didn't have any ships to take him off world anytime soon. He clearly was on the run from somebody. I didn't want to get myself tied up in it. I, I made a suggestion to him of a feller that I thought could uh, help him out. Frequent bars all over around here. Uh, someone who's kind of a smuggler has a ship character uh the, the character just wants to know uh, the um Ryan just wants to know the name the player goes oh god damn it <laughs> i think i think i might have an idea of who this son of a bitch is <laughs> who do you think it would be uh at a guess dev malio dev Mal- what he says <laughs> <laughs> some smuggler comes and goes from the moon pretty regular names dev malior I know that he's always hurting to make a buck. Seems like the dude's always working but never has any money. He's also just always hurting. Uh, (laughs) I don't know which 
cantina you'll find them in this time, but if you look around enough of them, you probably will. That's all I needed. I should have just started this level by going to cantinas tracking down Dev Malior. That would have... <laughs> I'm looking for a guy named Dev Malior. You just immediately ask for that name, even though you don't know who that exactly. is. Exactly. a character. Every Star Wars, first session of every Star Wars campaign, you just start by tracking down Dev Malior. <laughs> um, he's involved in something. He's always involved in something. I'll holster the blaster and move on. Okay. Um, where are you heading? I mean, the local cantina um, for this area is called the Rift. Okay, it's it's kind of the lesser shipyard, main large cantina. I'll head to the Rift. Okay. You've been to the Rift many a time before. That's where everyone goes to drink and start fights. And you've probably, I mean, careful, you're just on and in a cantina. Don't piss off any... Don't don't piss off any Jedi, or you might be the next one in the limb detachment story of this particular space epic. There was a Shistavan in that cantina, I think, until it got edited out in one of the redos of. Oh, the oh yeah, because it's not the Shistavan that gets the arm cut. He's just in the background, looking intimidating. Yeah. Someone else with a furry arm. Um, <laughs> it's, it's Star Wars. Lots of people have furry arms. Entering Shist- in, the rift is the rift. You know it very well. It. It looks like someone plucked a cantina straight out of Tatooine and threw it into the city. Like, it's right. it's kind of dingy, it's old, it's run down. Um, there's a number of Twi'leks who walk around trying to lure people into spending their credits on a little bit of fun and satisfaction. Um, and not like... And like for a Twi'lek, like an average, it's like, it's not the good looking, like, oh, oh la la, Twi'lek, it's like that Twi'lek, but it's been in the business a little too long, a little tired, the other cantinas don't want them anymore, kind of Twi'leks. Uh, <laughs> it's just, it's a rundown establishment, but the local hot spot here, and it's busy with all sorts of spacers and smugglers and scumbags. Um... The, you didn't really get much of a description of Dev Malior? Um, no, he's a human. Well, I'll start by looking around to see if there's... A human talking to a Korin, because that would make things easy. Go um, ahead and give me, um, uh, what is it called in this? Notice? Uh, perception. It's actually just perception. I'm going to roll a perception. And this one will be a, um, because of the specificity of what you're looking for, it'll be an easy, but go ahead and give yourself a setback die because of how much movement and stuff there is in so much crowds. Two successes. Two successes. So, Yay, a roll. It just had to be <laughs> extremely in my favor. Looking all through here, uh, you do not see... You see a number of humans, but you do not see any Korins. And definitely no humans talking to Korins. Uh, yeah, there's, there's no one that matches that description. Well, if this guy's kind of a known smuggler around here, I'll just start with the bartender, I guess. Okay. Bartender here is human. Uh, older female. Um, that's kind of like a, a zero tolerance to the BS kind of individual and kind of has to be for the nature of what establishment she runs. Um, and uh, her name is Suit. I'll just let her know I'm looking for a guy named Dev Malior. And she, uh, you walk up, you, you just walk up and say, uh, <laughs> don't mind me typing things. Um you just kind of walk up and, like, she's kind of talking to the customer. You're like, I'm looking for Dev Malley. Or, mm-hmm. But I, I do, like, I do, like, sort of when I say that, I do want to keep an eye on sort of the people on either side of me at the bar, just in case one of them's like... <laughs> like uh, <laughs> and she, like, kind of stops what she's doing and kind of glances over to you and is like, Dev, huh? What do you do this time? Talk to the wrong people, I guess? Or... Somebody else told somebody else told the wrong people to talk to him. <laughs> Probably more accurate. We'll be like kind of like look you up and down. Um, go ahead and roll me an easy whatever presence you'd like. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll give you a uh, whatever the blue bonus die is because she has good reason to not want to keep loose or keep tight-lipped about uh, two success one advantage two success and an advantage to so be like dev used to come here all the time he's no longer welcome in my establishment uh took a while to clean up the scorch marks off of the last chair he sat in so uh he's not here i know he's on world i've heard talk that he's out and about 
Last place I've heard he's been seen was Forgotten Dawn Cantina. And you know Forgotten Dawn Cantina. Well, actually, do you know this? Go ahead and roll me a... Um, what is it? Like, Knowledge Outer Rim? That is a knowledge. You can do Outer Rim or Underworld. Uh, Whichever you want. I believe and it'll be easy. Either one of those will be exactly the same. I'm not especially knowledgeable. One success, three advantages. Okay. Um, you know very well the Forgotten Dawn Cantina. Forgotten Dawn Cantina is the like largest cantina in the industrial district. Um, it's adjacent to the district you're in, but it's where a lot of the factory work and like uh, the ship, like Corellian ship manufacturing and stuff like that is operated out of that part of this, the city moon. Um, you also know that the place you actually have been to the place before and know the barkeep fairly well i appreciate the help if you see him tell him to fuck off <laughs> <laughs> she just turns right. and keeps keeps working i can do that onwards <laughs> to the next bar <laughs> to the next cd cantina um this one, so going, kind of traversing from here to there, it'll be a little bit of time to get there, unless you want to, like, spin credits on, like... <laughs> what credits? <laughs> there's a reason you're taking a job right now. Um, there's, like, you don't own your own personal speeder to go back and forth. There's one that you could probably borrow, if you wanted, from uh, Garo. It's kind of like the work truck. It kind of drives around to pick up parts and stuff like that. I'll just take that other guy's speeder back out for a spin, make sure the parts are all working out. <laughs> Do you want to try no. and do that? Um, no, I'll just head on foot. I okay. Takes a little longer, but you can definitely get there before the end of the day. Not that it's particularly easy, especially in this district, to tell the difference between like day and night on the moon, because it's always a smoggy mess on the moon of sin. Uh. <laughs> well, this place sure has a lot of nicknames. <laughs> it sure does. Little Coruscant, all crime all the time, the smuggler's moon, the moon of sin. Um, so... You will kind of travel on foot. You know how to get there. You've been there before. And you will arrive at the Forgotten Dawn Cantina. You know, there's actually a droid bartender here uh, who is known as TRLG. And TRLG is behind the bar where you walk in and it's similarly super crowded except that this one's like very much the other one's full of like a variety of people you know it's it's near this the port where there's all these different spacers and bounty hunters and smugglers and generic space scumbags here like everyone just kind of looks like a dejected factory worker like this is where people come after long days of work and unfair pay to <laughs> get a drink and drown some sorrows like almost everyone here looks like a dejected factory worker uh, go ahead and give me a, a easy perception. Everybody here looks like a dejected factory worker. Just Except about for <laughs> yes. maybe... Um, except for maybe one person. Three success, one advantage. There is one person who stands out here and is just happens to be sitting with their back to you uh, at the bar. It seems to be a human. Um, kind of looks like a pretty generic smuggler, um, smuggler type at least. He's got a blaster pistol on his hip and is wearing kind of a spacer jacket and seems to be conversing with one of the mine, uh, kind of like, not mine, but the like factory workers and this droid barkeep. It's probably um, inciting them to TRLG. unionize or something. <laughs> <laughs> and as you kind of walk up, with you also hear him like, he's clearly recounting some tale. And like, so then turns out the Imperial Customs Officer super into me right and <laughs> i was able to smooth talk my way down to just two years in lock up <laughs> and um he seems to be mid-story and the droid seems to be programmed to pay attention right uh, and the uh the factory worker seems to be too dejected and sad to stop him from a story that he doesn't really care about is there, a stool, is there a stool next to him? That's the, the opposite side is open. So like wanna, he's turned slightly to the right talking to these two and the stool to the left. Is I want to sit down with kind of my back to the bar. Okay. And I want to hook one foot on Dev's stool in okay. case he tries to get up and run. Uh, oh, okay. Um, 
I don't know anything about this man. I know everything about this man. <laughs> you know everything about this man. Um, and I'll and I'll probably just open with, uh, "You must be Dev." And he's gonna do that. And th- you heard of me? <laughs> he kind of turns looks to you. Who are you, friend? Name's Ryden. Ah, oh, Ryden. Well, uh, how can I help you? Well, uh, Dev, I'm a bounty hunter. <laughs> he kind of like <laughs> straightens up. He's like, "Who are you looking for?" Uh, isn't it your lucky day, Dev? I'm looking for a Corin named Rask Tarek. Go ahead and roll me a coercion. An easy <laughs> coercion. Can, can I lower the... <laughs> Unfortunately, there has to be something you're rolling against here. I'm going to rule, uh, so I won't let you use it on this. I ju- just one threat? Just one threat? Mm-hmm. He's gonna, like... Because unfortunately, coercion uses... Well, I guess if it was willpower or presence. It's not a failure, exactly though. Uh, he can, he's gonna kind of, like, turn towards him and be like... Oh, God, what was that? Tarek, 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 Tarek. I think that I might know who you're talking about. And, um... Real quickly, just let me work on something here. <laughs> He's like, I think uh, he's, uh, and then you hear like, uh, what is like, you guys have most been speaking in, you, you speak both languages, but like you mostly speak in like a galactic common tongue. Mm-hmm. And you hear someone speak in like the hut tongue, basically, like the hut common for this part of it. Banthapudu, basically, like bullshit. And then uh, from like kind of behind you over your shoulder and you hear blaster fire and you see a shot hit uh, <laughs> hit past you and hit uh, Dev in the stomach and he kind of grabs at it and trips over your leg on the stool <laughs> falling over to the ground and you kind of turn to see a Corrin turning and bolting through a door. And he's like <laughs> Stay down and stay here! <laughs> <laughs> Not going anywhere! I'm, um, I'm, I'm after him. Uh, I will have you roll me a cool, and he will roll me a vigilance. Damn. Because he got the drop on this situation, it turns out. Oh, okay. That's better than I tended to roll, uh, for the enemy's rolling initiative when I was running this. <laughs> he is definitely not one of those. Who do I shoot? The bounty hunter or the guy who might be able to get me off world? The guy who might be able to get me off world just because it's a dev. <laughs> Poor dev. Shot again. He has just What'd you get? Uh, one success, one advantage. Alright. Um, you will be acting first, more or less, in this. Um, so... Go ahead, tell me what you do. How has he made it out the door? He did. Okay. So he like the blast happened and you turned to kind of see him in the process of like ducking in. Can and I getting out can of I make it out the door? You could definitely make it out the door. Yeah. I'll make it out the door and take a shot at him with a stun setting, I think. So you bolt out the door, give me a perception. What difficulty? Um we will call it easy. Because you got out here quick enough. Two success, one advantage. Two success, one advantage. Um, you see that like across this like pretty narrow walkway is a factory that the door is currently open on, and you can because you have the advantage. I'm saying you can see him like booking it down, kind of like a, a catwalk way that's through this door, and the blast door, the the door is starting to close, but you have a line of sight on him. I'll take a quick stun shot at him. Okay. Uh, I'll give you a setback die for cover because the door's starting to close, but you will get the get the shot off. He will be in close range. So it should just be one difficulty, I believe. It's an easy shot at close range. Yes. Okay. It's one difficulty, setback. I haven't, like, run my own character in this <laughs> in a long time, so... <laughs> it's a little weird. Especially when you're used to one of many other ones. Two advantages. Okay. Dang it. 
the most inconvenient of results. <laughs> um, he's just going to have a setback die on his next check, whatever okay. it is. All right. So you, it kind of, like, it's that circle kind of forming and going across, and the door just kind of catches the edge of it, and it kind of, like, wraps around it and doesn't really... But it makes him, like, look over his shoulder, and you can see that he's going to kind of be off his footing, maybe, for something he's going to attempt to do next. Um, uh, that's what I got. And the door kind of closes. It doesn't... It clearly doesn't seal. Like, he wasn't able to stop right. turning, like, lock it. He's just, like, bolting. Um, and he is going to attempt to do stuff. Attempt being the keyword here. That'll be... Is that agility or brawn? It's brawn. Okay, um, and he moves along. He, the, you, he does something inside of that door. <laughs> I can't see. And yeah, then it is uh, over to you. Uh, through the door. Okay, you go up, and like there's like a doo -doo, slides open, and you step in, and you can see that this clearly is like a manufactory plant for droids. Um, it's probably looking at it. It looks like it's a factory for factory droids like it makes <laughs> right. like bulkier like freight carrying droids you and stuff like that you always have to remember that there's somewhere out there is a factory making factory parts <laughs> exactly and this is a factory with droids making droids probably um and so it's kind of like very a la episode two droid factory on geonosis like this like long conveyor belt of all these like robot arms and stuff that are like right, attaching right. and moving stuff and you can clearly see that like like looking at this catwalk He's not there anymore, but it looks like there's kind of like um, like a safety rail on the side of it, mm -hmm. and it has one of the like little door things that's swinging. Like he just pushed through it, and you, it looks like there's a ladder that goes down from there, um, but you do not see him like currently climbing down the ladder. So you don't <laughs> think unless jumped. unless he uh, really did a a quick job of sliding down and stuff, you you don't see him at the moment. Um. I'll run to the top of the ladder to okay. start with, I guess, and see if I can see him from there. Or... Give me a perception. And this will be a medium perception. Moderate. Average. Whatever the correct term is. Two. One failure, one advantage. Um, you can not see him, but you can see that on the conveyor belt, like a little ways ahead, uh, there's clearly like a part that's knocked over. Like somebody bumped into it, maybe. You jumped onto the conveyor belt? Mm -hmm. I guess I'm jumping onto the conveyor belt. Go ahead and give me an athletics. And it'll be a moderate athletics. Or average, or whatever. Two success, three advantages. Two success, three advantage. Um, you see how somebody could land poorly here. There's all these little, like, boxes and, like, little things popping up and it's not like a flat tread to land on but you happen to land in a way that like it's not only do you land well but you land well and keep momentum to kind of keep moving um and start running up along this and you swear you can kind of see like this is a long factory and you think like as like a big arm kind of comes and stamps something down and goes back up you swear you see some movement up ahead on this on this i gotta be careful about stunning this guy <laughs> i just get stamped <laughs> Well, I took him alive, but then... <laughs> but then... <laughs> Why are you bringing me a droid as proof of his death? Well... Well, if you open the chassis of the droid, you'll find what's left of the quarry. <laughs> the corn, excuse me. <laughs> Your quarry, the corn. Um, and then it'll be to his turn. You'll, you'll still be, like, making forward progress here. Uh, make... That... Okay. Um, up ahead, you hear. Well, actually, go and give me a perception really quickly. An easy one. This doesn't help you very much. It's just if you one hear, success, one advantage. One success, one advantage. Okay. Um, you know he is still on this conveyor belt because you hear. Like up ahead, what sounds like a kind of loud clunk and a, <laughs> um, and then it's up to you. Just keep moving. Okay, 
Go ahead and give me another... Uh, there's not like an acrobatic skill or like a dodge. Just roll me agility. A moderate agility. An average agility. Just, just straight up agility. Mm-hmm. I don't think there's anything that works well for this. Two advantages? Two advantages. Okay. Um, so you are able to like maneuver this thing. You're not gaining very quickly. You're having you're being more cautious than like full hearted going for it. Um, but you're like able to move along without like avoiding these big robot arms coming and like grabbing pieces off or dropping things down. Um, and you kinda like as you move forward, you can clearly see a like corner of a um, like kind of swinging arm thing with a welder on it that has like some fresh uh, what looks like maybe blood <laughs> dripping off of the corner of it Oof. and you can see like it's something that kind of like swings very subtly and then like a, a welder comes down welds and then swings out and then swings in and welder comes down he's not just laying unconscious he next is to not. the conveyor belt is he? he is not okay. but you can also <laughs> see like there's like a little bit of a drip every now and then up ahead like he maybe racked his head on this thing but is still running well uh could probably make survival checks to track that in on um, future turns. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I'll just I'll just move as far ahead as I can okay. on this turn. Trying to at least keep up with him, preferably gain on him. Alright. He might just take himself out apparently, so Um Doesn't go well for him there. <laughs> uh, actually we might need to roll this too. Let's see. <laughs> He's better at this at least, but Okay. So um you kind of move through, you're ducking under stuff, and you can definitely hear up ahead a uh, what sounds like a door opening and closing. It sounds like it's coming slightly off to the side of the conveyor belt. And you can... Actually, go ahead and roll me a... He failed. He failed miserably. So actually, you don't have to roll anything. You can just tell that it's a doorway off to the left of this conveyor belt, not to the right. Cool. Heading for the door. Okay. And... You- you kind of you can just kind of like step off to the side now, and you can see clearly there's like a, a similar door on this now lower level off to the. Do I get that there. weird? Um, I guess I don't know if it would be happening if I'm working on the conveyor belt, but you know, like when you get off of a treadmill and it's like it feels like every, <laughs> everything you know, like, like approaches. Everything's yeah, like actually. Like, you get a little like vertigo-y for just a yeah. second, but not enough to really play on. Right. And you can see like uh, a factory worker who's mm-hmm. like clearly turning and looking at the door and then kind of like looks confused as, as you, at you as you run past as well it's kind of like what? <laughs> uh he seems to be someone who's just like more or less watching and maintaining these machines doing the work in here uh and you i assume are powering through that door yeah stepping out it opens again into a kind of narrow uh walkway that has another building straight across from it you don't see any doors on this side of that building that's next to it and it, like there's a right and a left turn um to take and they both kind of branch off in different directions where neither direction do you see him at the moment can i do a survival check to try and track him yeah because he's leaving blood around yes i will um uh, i will say it is going to be a moderate one but i will give you uh blue because of the blood one success one threat one success one threat um he went to the right, not to the left. And the threat is... Uh, it's dark and spooky down there. Um, there's not The threat's not really going to play into this. Um, it seems like there's like lots of kind of exposed machinery and stuff that's kind of coming out of the side of the factory here that may be hazardous. Uh, so you'll want to step lightly going through there. Okay, well, I'll head to the right. But you see, like, a small drip of the blood that direction. And you start running around that corner. And we'll do these around the edge here. Uh, Okay. And you kind of... Back to your turn, I assume you're going to continue to run. Go ahead and just give me... Uh, an easy we'll just call it another agility moving through here to make sure that you don't accidentally zap yourself or anything like that two success one advantage you move through very easily there's like I said there's some like exposed wiring or something that you just wouldn't want to brush up against and you very quickly and easily maneuver around it going this way and it clearly kind of like goes straight for a little bit then it turns sharply to the left and opens out into a wider kind of causeway street Um, and 
Go ahead and give me a perception. Getting to that. What difficulty? Um, moderate. Average. One threat. You... Like after you, as you stop, like a speeder drives by, and you step back, and it narrowly misses you, but uh, you don't notice anything else. Hmm. Is there any blood splatters anywhere? Give me a survival. Average. I'll give you the blue die again as well on this. <laughs> Two success, one advantage, one triumph. One triumph. With the triumph. <laughs> And the threat that he rolled, um, you kind of like look and you can see that there's a drip right in front of what looks like either a residential building or a small business with no signage on the outside of it. Um, and it's not like it's more rickshaw than industrial. It seems to be kind of like like there's not a sliding like blast door on it. It's like a hungover curtain and you hear just beyond it, like a... And then this corn comes kind of tumbling backwards through the door, uh, seeming to have ran into somebody doing something that didn't go great for him and get thrown out of whatever he just ran into. And so you're... He kind of tumbles out that way. That will be the end of, like, your mm -hmm. round to kind of track up to there. He's going to, like... She turns to you and try and roll and book it. He's just going straight down the street at this point, um, but is going to run like a, a range band away from you um but then it'll be your turn so what's if i take a shot right now what's the range gonna be from where you're standing it will be medium range which okay. you can't stun from but right. you'll be able to run up to close range and take a shot if you want which is probably what i'll do yeah that, I, that will be I doable for i would have aimed but if i can't you instead can, yeah. i will run up and if you want to go for the lethal option you could aim uh eh. But if you want to stun him, it'll have to be at close range. Because yeah. that's the only range that stun works at. Oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give stun a, uh, a chance. Give stun a chance. <laughs> give stun a chance. Um, that's just yeah, one for short one. range, I believe. Yep. So And there's no setback dice or anything on this one. He's pretty straight ahead of you. Two advantages. <laughs> Two advantages. So he's got a setback die on his next step. <laughs> okay. I knew my dice would hold out just long enough to get me into combat, and, <laughs> and, then, then, and then nothing. Okay. Um, he is going to... Like, he's going to kind of run, and there is a speeder up ahead of him that he's going to jump into, and you see him, like, quickly trying to uh, hotwire it to try and gun it out of there, and he'll have a harder time doing that under duress here. <laughs> And that will be a mechanics, which he is not exceptional at. This I'm not exceptional this at mechanics either. And a setback die. Roll. Straight nothing. <laughs> uh, he, could have, he would have had a chance without that setback die to at least have an advantage. But um, <laughs> <laughs> So he jumps in and you're like, tss, 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 and you're like him messing with stuff, but then it's your round and you'll like he is, again, at, like, the moderate mm -hmm. range, the medium range from you, so you have to move up to close. And you'll have some cover, but, um, because he's inside of this, but you can get up to close range and try and stun him again. That I will do. Okay. Just one for cover, or... Yeah, let's we'll do one, one setback die okay. for the cover. One success, one triumph. Ha-ha! Um, so... Which means he takes as much as it matters, because with common enemies, the yeah, stun this guy's a minion, weird. so he definitely yeah, doesn't have multiple like of those. It's, seven strain damage. Okay, um, go ahead and... T what does it look like when you stun this guy? It's like... Tss, 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 like, like, looks up over... Tss, tss, tss. Well, I, 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 I'd probably, like, come up on the other side. Like, if he's, like, he's sitting on the driver's side, he's, like, keeps looking out that side. I'd mm -hmm. probably just walk up to the passenger side and stun him in there. He's like... <laughs> kind of head hits the little steering console in front of him, and he goes limp. Uh... Well, I'll put him in my binders first. Okay. Um, and then search him. I know at least he has a blaster pistol. Mm -hmm. I'll take that from him. He has so. a blaster pistol on him. He's got uh, a total of 15 credits. Hey! In his um, Money! And that's it apart from the clothes on him. Hmm. Well, uh... 
Can I make a mechanics check to hotwire the speeder? Go for it. It's an average mechanics check, and you do not have a setback die. <laughs> Two successes, one threat. Okay. Um, you you kind of drag him over to the passenger seat, like, and it kind of boots up, and you're like, oh, I got it. And you hear in, like, hot behind you, like, hey, that's my speeder. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> What's up? I, uh, I, um, I want to take this back to, um, actually, I should probably just go back around to where Deb is first. Okay. So I'll start there. So you just gun it out of there, mm-hmm. and you can see it looks like uh, there's, like, <laughs> a larger kind of fairly built but also not like a fat way uh larger <laughs> weak way who's kind of like come behind like, da, da, and like yelling as you swerve around the corner and he definitely can't catch you uh in his and it's like one of those like two-seater mm-hmm. little speeders it's nothing fancy it's i probably like won't keep it yeah <laughs> Right, it's up to you. Now you got two cars for driving around in. It doesn't. Looking at it, it doesn't look like the kind of vehicle that'd be like a a registered car that they're going to like track the plates on. Uh, it's a junker for sure. And you swerve around. You can pretty easily, you know, drive. Like this guy doesn't know where you just came from. He's mm-hmm. not going to be able to like track you down. Or yeah, so I'm just heading back around. To loop the bar. around to the bar. Um, and uh, looping around, this guy is still stunned in the mm-hmm. seat. Are you just like? I, I, I kind of just want to stick my head in the bar and see if Dev is still there. Like You I see Dev sit. is sitting back at the same seat he was before, clutching his stomach, drinking a drink. <laughs> and the like. it seems like kind of people have cleared out from around him a little bit, but the barkeep is still there because it's programmed to listen to I'll him. Just walk and he's like, he's like, collar and, and drag him through the couch. He chugs what's <laughs> left of it and sets it on the counter as you pull him back. Um, he does not resist. <laughs> And he comes out and he's like, hey, uh, buddy, pal, uh, did you find the guy? Scumbag shot me. Did you see that? Um, well, he's welcome to, uh, he's, he's welcome to take it out of the guy himself, as long as he doesn't kill him. Um, I want to know if he uh, had anything with him when him and Dem first met. If he hid anything, if he uh, gave anything to Dev to hide. <laughs> Uh, With a kind of pointed, like, you should tell me if there is... Give me. is. We're going to call it a coercion at this point. It'll be an easy one, and I'll give you two blue dice on it. Uh, he ha- Because he's scared of you, and he has no reason to uh, lie to you with this guy at this point. Two success, three advantages. Okay. Um, he says, he didn't have anything on him, but I can tell you where he's been staying. That'll be good enough. And he basically describes a part of this manufacturing sector that has multiple little, like, shanty huts that the lower end of the low-end factory workers would stay in. Um, and, yeah, tells you where that's at. Well, uh... Tells you kind of like a block of them that this guy... Before I get at. back in the speeder, I'll stun the guy, unconscious guy again. <laughs> uh, and then, uh... And then I'll head that way. And you're leaving Dev behind at that point? I assume? I mean... He can come along if he wants. There's not a lot of room in this speeder, and uh, he might want to go get that looked at. But mm-hmm. um, he's gonna be like, oh, "I can't help you anymore. Uh, I'm gonna take my advance payment from this idiot and go drink." <laughs> <laughs> Never, ever pay Dev in advance. Never pay Dev in advance. <laughs> and uh, he's gonna walk back into the the establishment as you you speed away. There's scumbags, and then there's scumbags, and then there's Dev Malior. <laughs> there's the scummiest of scum, Dev Malior. And then you, uh, I mean, you can follow the directions. You can get to this kind of shanty town of factory workers and the like, and um, find the kind of block of ones that he described. He didn't know which one specifically this guy was in, but uh, one of them. Any. Low end factory workers hanging around here. Yeah, this is kind of the end of the day at this point, like getting close to nighttime more or less. Um, so there's definitely some. I'll just about. I'll uh. I'll just talk to one of the ones loitering in front of that block and let them know, like, like, like. I'm a bounty hunter. This guy had a bounty on him. I'm like, which of these was he staying in? And look, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's like. A pretty gruff-looking older human who's mm-hmm. got, because uh, this is the story of Star Wars, he's missing a hand, and he has, like, a cybernetic hand, but it's not like a 
Anakin Luke cybernetic hand. It's like a industrial clamp cybernetic hand, basically, that's loosely gripping a death stick <laughs> that he's huffing on. And he kind of like turns and looks at you, looks at him, looks at you, points at one, goes back to his death stick. Thanks, friend. Nods. <laughs> uh, I mean, does does the door does the door open? Is it locked? Is it similar? Even a door? It, yeah, th- there's these are like lockable, like metal doors. They are very mundane uh, mechanically and would be pretty easy to make open. Um, and you know, inside's literally just like it's like a they're one room apartments with no toilet or shower or anything in it. They're just like a place to sleep. It's that's, a cubicle. Yeah, it's a cubicle. It's a cubicle with a uh, locking plywood door, <laughs> the space equivalent of that. Um, you know, stun the guy in the in the uh, again, um, <laughs> just to be sure, just to be sure. Uh, and then I'll um, see about getting into his apartment. Okay, um, it'll be a computer's check. To you can do a computers if you want it to be uh, subtle, or you can do a mechanics if you don't care if people see you like pry a, a panel off of this thing and start digging into it. It's gonna be a mechanics there, Bob. <laughs> and like uh, a couple people, including that guy, like turn and look, and they go back to what they're <laughs> like. They're like, um, don't want any trouble. Easy, uh, average. The mechanics check will be easy. It'll be easy. easy. One success, one advantage. Okay. Door opens. Um, it won't take me long to search this thing. So it's, I'll search it's it real quick. Uh, there is like a cot, and underneath it, there is what appears to be like a uh, decent looking, quality wise, like metal locked chest. Is there like a cyber lock on the front of it? Come. Here, pull shoulder. I'll dump it in the guy's lap. Okay. Um, stun him again. Uh-huh. And, um... Do, would I know where the, um... You know where they're, like... The, their this, main uh, hangout the is. The comet's main hangout is? Mm-hmm. I'll just head straight there, I guess. Okay. Go ahead and give me a, um... Streetwise. An easy streetwise. Easy streetwise. That is... Cunning. Luckily for me. One success, one threat. One success, one threat. This, if this is, like, looking at it, you can also see that, like, there is some branding on this of the, like, red-blue swirl that mm. kind of set on the top of the chest. You know that this is probably uh, spice delivered to them from the Nebula Syndicate. Um, and by its size, this is probably, like, somewhere between ten and 20,000 credits worth of spice if this is fully loaded chest. Uh. Like, this... This is a pretty sizable shipment that this guy seemed to have tried to lift and get off world with. Um, and the threat is that you now have that in your car, so don't get <laughs> jumped. <laughs> uh, in your stolen speeder. And you're, yeah, you'll, you'll be able definitely to kind of steer your way back to the district. It'll be getting to like pretty late by the time you get back, or not late, like early nighttime right. by the time you get back there. And there's kind of like a place that looks like a cantina but it's not like a cantina that's open for it's business. like a clubhouse it's a clubhouse basically and as per usual there's a ton of swoop bikes parked all around outside of it you can see out front there's a couple of guys in jackets smoking death sticks talking to each other and one guy right beside the door that you've seen plenty of times before that's kind of their typical heavy who stands out there it's it's uh a gamorian who's got like a sleeveless one of the jackets on Nice. And he kind of sits out there and he wears like a set of brass knuckles and just kind of sits there looking intimidating for anyone walking up. I'll, hey, uh, I'll you pull up? put the put the lock chest up on one shoulder, grab grab the guy with the collar of the other hand and just start heading inside. Okay. You start walking towards the door and like it's kind of hard. Like this is a fairly heavy chest on mm-hmm. him. And as you kind of come up, you can see the Gamorrean kind of takes note and comes up and like grabs the dude. He grabs him like... <laughs> by belt and by like back of jacket like someone who would like throw someone out a door and just kind of picks him up and walks beside you so you can use both hands on the chest um and the the two guys like smoking death sticks and sitting out there as you walk and kind of turn both spit at the ground as he walks in not in a probably in a disrespect to him not to you hopefully uh (laughs) and entering in the place is bustling there's uh 
couple of people, you know, they have like a, a bar top and there's someone, everyone in here is wearing the jackets, even the person sitting behind the desk seems to be like an older looking kind of beat up human who's probably been in the game a while, kind of handing out drinks and talking to people. There's a couple people playing that like weird monster space chess in one <laughs> corner and uh, a, like a pretty uh, lively game of sabak going on at a table between people who you see that guy's like throwing cards down and cussing at each other and laughing. Seems to be a pretty popping spot. Good for these guys. Hmm? And just beyond the kind of main room, there's uh, another, like, blast door. And there's two guys at the door there that look like uh, heavies. And um, you know that through there is usually where uh, Miria, Miria Horn, the leader of the Comets, I does guess, business. I guess me and my new Gamorian friends uh, <laughs> will head for that door, probably. Okay. You walk in and you can see, like, there's... Um, there's not like a, a band playing right. here. There's kind of music coming from sort of a box somewhere. Uh, but like, it's like there's lots of talk and it kind of gets quiet as you walk in and start moving through and they kind of take note of what's going on. But then they're just like going back to conversation with each other. and <laughs> Jazz music stops. <laughs> Jazz music continues, but lively conversation <laughs> stops. Um, and you enter in and go up to that door. And uh, with the quarry you have in tow, they definitely like... The one like turns and um, clicks on something on the door, and you can see there's like a little like calm speaker thing. And uh, the guy turns in there and says that someone's here with with Tarek. And you can hear back like, oh, it sounds kind of like a, a raspy female voice, like send them in. And uh, you, door opens. <laughs> now, does the Gamorian actually enter carrying the guy, or does he just stop at the door and get him into the... <laughs> he he has to get back to work. So the door opens. <laughs> this guy comes tumbling unconscious into the room. The Gamorian turns, nods at you, and starts walking back to the, the front help. door. And you enter in, holding a big box of spice, and um, beyond you see a couple of things. Uh, you can see that, like, kind of sitting... At a table, it's not. It's not like a desk. Like a, she's just sitting there and expects me. Like it's, it's like a kind of like a clubhouse meeting sort of table. And there's just a couple people sitting at it right now. You can see someone that you recognize as Miria Horn, who is a female human, old old lady, cracked skin, uh, rough and tumble, has lived a hard life. And uh, you can see next to her on one side, you recognize um, Conharin, the Nikto. And on the other side, you can see a uh, human male who you don't think you've met personally before, but you've heard that Miria has a son. And this guy looks like a young male, not as cracked up, exact <laughs> replica of her face. Like they are spitting image of each other. Mm. Humans and, are weird. Yeah. And uh, she kind of like looks at the guy on the ground and looks at the like looks at him with like a disgraceful look in her eye and like looks up at you immediately takes note of the box in your hand and like her expression lightens up and she gets very happy to see uh her drugs returned you want this on the floor or the desk you can drop it on him for all i care we'll pick it up later (laughs) take a seat please i'll take a seat i'm judging by the fact you brought the whole body he's just stunned down Mm -hmm. there good good he had a couple of close calls in a droid assembly plant but he made it through okay. Wasn't that lucky for him? <laughs> well, I don't think so. And she kind of turns to the, the human male who looks eerily like her. And it says, Gil, pay the man. <laughs> now I'm just wondering, is this just a clone of her? It would be pretty that wild. Sound, that, sounds like some, that sounds like something crime syndicates would do in Star Wars. It's worth saying, these guys are a gang, not a syndicate. <laughs> but they work for a syndicate. They work for a syndicate. Uh, but they don't work for a big name syndicate. They work for a, a I'm syndicate. Not, I'm not saying that That's cloning right. would be perfect. <laughs> That's why he's he, <laughs> he's got like a, a third finger coming out of his nose. No. Uh, <laughs> Pay the man. <laughs> yes, mother. Yes, <laughs> mother. Um, the guy and he kind of and she says and he brought it all back as well as him alive. So the extra two and he kind of tosses you. A larger bag of credits and a smaller bag of credits. Hmm. Um, I do like two bags of credits. And she's going to say, clearly you're someone who can handle yourself. If you're looking for a little more credits in a couple days from now, uh, we have a particularly important transaction needing to happen and could use some extra muscle. All right. 
You can count me in. Okay. Three days time. Show up here. Around this time, nightfall. Okay. I can do that. And uh, get yourself a drink on the way out. I won't argue. <laughs> and uh, I assume you, unless you have something else to say to them. No. Uh, you're able to walk out of there. You can, you would, between the two bags, the uh, larger of the two bags has 500 credits in it, which is the agreed upon amount. Uh, the smaller one has an additional 200. So mm-hmm. a total of 700 credits. Seven hundred and fifteen credits. <laughs> <laughs> You're swimming in it now. Um, and on the way out, I assume you take her mm-hmm. up on the offer. Yeah. You go up, and the uh, the older looking guy kind of he looks like this like an Earth perfect example of an old biker dude. Like he's got like kind of slicked back, graying hair, and kind of this like salt and pepper, big bushy beard, and kind of turns and looks to you. He has like he's got like. Um, some sort of like cordis weave bandana on, <laughs> and clearly a pair of like cordis weave bandana. Holy shit! <laughs> this guy's hardcore. Um, and like a pair of spacer tra- goggles that look like a pair of sunglasses tucked if up. If somebody in the tries room. to hit him in the head with a lightsaber, it just might not work. <laughs> that is hardcore. And he kind of he turns, and you can see he's got the like the emblem. Uh, he's also got a sleeveless one of the jackets mm-hmm. on. He's got the emblem like tatted on his shoulder, and he turns and looks to you. Like, we're gonna get you. Man, I've got no idea. <laughs> You've been working hard. The strong stuff. And he kind of goes underneath and he hears him like... Anything you feel valve. like pouring for me. And he hands you a, a uh, glass of something faintly purple and frothy. Kind of a clearish purple color with a white foamy top on it. Cheers, mate. He grabs uh, the glass he's holding that has something identical looking in it and clanks it against yours. He's wondering, like, looking around, pretty much everyone has what he has. So when he says, like, the get you the strong stuff, stuff. It's, it's probably, probably, like, it's, probably stuff. it's what they have. <laughs> yeah. <That's... laughs> but he's got to look cool when he hands it. Drinking it, it's Star Wars beer. <laughs> Space beer. Uh, something... Something alcoholic and good. Something uh, space alcoholic. <laughs> space alcoholic. I assume that's like regular alcoholic, but in space. And you can see another thing of note here uh, is a more or less dartboard. But you can recognize that there's a jacket kind of pinned up with it that has like these kind of like... These darts that have like small rocket thrusters on the back of them that people like line up and then they like flick a button and it like shoot straight. So it's all about like aiming. It's like a kind of game of game, a game of darts of that. That's sticking into a jacket, and on it is a row of eyes with like a claw mark through it. Um, Another game, which, probably. Go ahead and give me an easy knowledge underworld or streetwise. Streetwise is, and I'll give you a blue on this too because it better. directly relates to your neck of the woods. Three success, one advantage. You would recognize this as the Nexaclaw game. Which is kind of the main rival of the um, Comets. They're not a swoop bike gang, but they're just kind of a generic gang. Probably own some swoop bikes, but they're not like a biker gang. And uh, you know that they're, um, they don't really have the issue of dealing in weapons overlapping, but they're, they have like connections off world that bring in spice and they're big spice distributors and kind of operate in the same neck of the woods so them and the comets don't like each other. Fair enough. I, kind of, I, I Look, I figured it was either this guy's cut that they were um, throwing stuff at or it was a rival gang. Mm-hmm. Turned out to be rival gangs. Mm-hmm. And you know that a Nexu... Um, just for... To kind of explain, because I think it's neat that I came up with it. And I have to talk about how neat the thing I came up with is. Uh, the next two are like, if you again, yeah, lots of Star Wars Episode 2 references in this, you know, the, the best movie in the Star Wars fan. Don't, don't crucify me, nerds. I'm kidding. Uh, the next two is that like weird lion thing that jacks up. Oh, the yeah. Princess. I, so the like row of eyes is like arranged like that thing's eyes and it's like a claw mark well, going we, through those eyes. We talked about, because one of the expansions for this s- system... Specifically for the ace career, 
adds a like oh, sort of beast, beast rider, rider yeah. um, specialization. We were talking about doing a. Uh, um, it was like a uh, um, Tuscan Raider, like bounty hunter that rides one of that those, like rides, rides one of Nexo. those because they can like climb vertical walls and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Like, so the Nexa really clogging, good. it's like the row of eyes like the Nexu has, and then like claw mark Dang. gash going down it. Those guys are pretty cool. Mm-hmm. I think to myself, but don't say out loud. <laughs> That's probably for the best. Uh, and unless you want to hang out in the clubhouse a little longer, you are. Oh, I'll probably head out and okay. get some sleep. All right, you head back to your. Little hmm. bunk at uh, Garo's shop. 